Okay, this is a video that, without a doubt, is going to upset quite a few Seventh-day Adventist pastors. But if you go to my Image of the Beast page, you'll understand what I'm talking about here. As a matter of fact, this is one of the older pages on the website that has grown over the years with every political event that has come forward in regards to the 501c3, which is in fact the image of the beast. But with every posting to this page that made it grow, and every update, and every video that I've made over the years that I've placed on this page, at each new posting, I was ridiculed and declared to be in error regarding how, in order to get the 501c3 contract, you have to join your church with the second beast of Revelation so as to prophetically create that image of the beast, the first beast in Rome. They all laughed at that, right? And it just kept happening. I just kept posting up the videos. But notice this. And no, I'm not going to rehash all that I stated in these videos because, quite frankly, I'm getting a little tired of, of repeating myself on how obvious this all was from day one. But as expected, and as I stated in one or two of these videos, even though Trump said he would repeal the Johnson Amendment, we knew he could never do that because Christian prophecy cannot be changed by mankind. It just can't be done. But as also expected, it appears he either rewrote it or all of us missed something that's been in the law all along, or the 501c3 pastors who knew it never told any of us about it. Senator James Lankford of Oklahoma literally stated that nonprofits or 501c3s are allowed to lobby Congress or their local elected officials. And the heading on page 424 of the brand new tax reform bill that was just signed into law this morning now states Section 501c3 organizations are permitted to make statements relating to political campaigns and ordinary course of activities and carrying out exempt purposes. Now, I'm no lawyer, but what the senator said and what we see in the law now seems rather obvious. It's as I've been saying for years, the image is alive, but only the multi-millionaire pastors with government connections always seem to get away with making political statements from their pulpits. You know, most of the other pastors are either just too fearful to do so because of all the legal jargon confusing them, or they simply refuse to pay a lawyer to look into the contract that they signed in the first place. The option to endorse a candidate or campaign is off the table for now, yeah, that they've been talking about the last few weeks, but they never really needed that anyway. I mean, common sense dictates politicians aren't going to want them to have that kind of power anyway because it would prevent them from gaining office, and that's why Johnson set up the amendment in the first place. But once in office, they most assuredly want the money the pastors offer them during the lobbying process because politicians are all about the dollar. And besides, prophecy never said the pastors would endorse candidates. Revelation 13, 15 only said they would be allowed to lobby religious law. In these last days, it has become apparent that the Christians have a real problem with the many blind preachers of filthy lucre who refuse to do the right thing. Basic reality is, and I have alluded to this for decades, just because the law wasn't officially passed as of yet and was only being discussed by politicians or even played with via executive orders by presidents or even passed as bills a few times, the so-called teachers of prophecy in bed with the second beast were so disobedient to the Lord that gives them utterance to see his prophetic word, they couldn't see that the prophecy was already fulfilled. The fact the government of the USA was talking about such things that were outlined word for word in the scripture thousands of years ago proved it was already a done deal. You can't evade the fact that Christian prophecy is that accurate. But because of disobedience to the Lord, these so-called men of the cloth kept hanging onto their self-inspired thread of self-deception in the hopes the bill would never pass, making students of prophecy appear to be in error so their guilt in keeping their precious 501c3 would dissipate while at the same time declaring it is not a fulfillment of the prophecy regarding them actually building an image to the beast in Rome, which is implied as their duty in the 501c3 contract the very moment they signed it. You know, methinks there are a lot of pastors, preachers, and teachers in the Seventh-day Adventist church that need to step down and back away from that pulpit. No, I, I don't expect they will, of course, but one can expect their churches and schools are going to see yet another exodus, even more obvious than the one that started a few decades ago. Thank you for watching. God bless.